What's good, everyone? It's your boy Dak Donnaway, aka the Dig Dug himself. First and foremost, before I say anything else, I would like you to know that I'm. I feel like I'm gonna be losing my voice in a couple of days. So if this video sounds a little weird, you know I apologize for that. I am indeed definitely losing my voice. I mean, I, yesterday it was just really, really rough. This morning, even worse. So, and I mean, it just tends to get worse from here on out because you know that's just the nature of things. Regardless. Today, guys, we're gonna be fighting the Kush Lidiara. Uh Kush has been a long-standing monster, I believe. Don't. All right. Every time I do this, I always, always seem like a liar because uh, Kush was a monster that, if not mistaken, debuted in the second generation of Monster Hunter, and that's a whole generation I never actually played. I played the first generation, then skipped over to the third. But he gen he debuted there. I'm 100 sure about that. Pretty sure. And he was a flagship, I think, for Dose. I'm not 100 on that either, but regardless, the whole point of the, the fact of the matter is he's here today in Monster Hunter World, and we're going to be fighting him. Now, I'm going to give you guys the the skinny right off the jump. Um, he's a bastard. Yes, I said it. Uh, he, he's really annoying. Truth be told, if you ever heard the term, too much good thing in Kiwi, that's not true, because in this particular fight, you can never have too many flash pods. I mean, yo, bring the three that you can bring, and then bring 10 flash bugs. Dead serious. I mean, you're going to need all 13 of them. Um, I honestly, in my honest and honest and honest opinions, was not prepared enough because the biggest issue with this one is that he they, they changed the way he fought uh, in the past couple of years because he would throw out smaller tornadoes that were e easily just you know you can just avoid them or whatever. Yeah, they got a little annoying, but you kind of avoid them. They kind of moved around the field or whatever. And this one, he places huge typhoons. They just stand there. And it controls that whole section of the area, and you have to fight around it. He himself likes to stay either in it or around it, so making it kind of hard for you to actually get a hold of him. Now, when he throws up multiple of these, he just section off a whole mass of the of the area that you're in, and you can't actually fight him effectively doing parts of that. So the greatest way to actually combat this is just to bring him on the ground, because this time around, he likes to stay in the air a lot more than he used to. Way more than the Rathalos. Well, way more, yeah, way more than the Rathalos. And... You can never have too much, fla too many flash bombs to bring him down, down to the ground. Now, I'll say this: if you aren't gonna fight him with elder, uh, with elder two weapons, I highly suggest you do that this time around for sure, for sure. Uh, by now, you definitely have fought Nergagante, and maybe you've done like me and fought Valhazak, but you're gonna really need those elder seals to alleviate him from going into his black tornado form. Now, the black tornado, it's, it's, it, it's impenetrable. Truth be told, like you can kind of wear high, uh, high windproof. And kind of navigate around the other tornadoes, but the black one, that's an exclusive Kush, like, thing. I mean, that's just, that's always been his thing. And the only way to prevent him from actually going into this is to actually hit him with that Elder Seal. And, um, he'll be un, 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 unavailable. Unable, not unavailable, what the heck? Unable to actually go into it. So bring you some Elder Seal when you come to fight him. Bring Elder Seal and bring Flash Pods. Those are two definite facts of life. If you're not about the Elder Seal life, you don't have one, uh, fire. Fire or Thunder, those two are actually really good at uh, fighting him if you are in a pinch. But um, really, guys, I strongly suggest you bring the Elder Seal because when he goes into the black, the black uh, tornado, no matter your wind resistance, you can't penetrate it. The only thing to penetrate it is his own particular set skill, which we will talk about very briefly. But as it stands, let's finish talking about like what he can do for the most part. Like I said, the wind is his biggest thing. He does fly a lot more than before, like a lot more than before. So the more the more time he's on the ground than he is in the air, he's not putting up tornadoes. He's not, you know, floating around doing weird stuff. So flash bomb almost as often as he can. Um, it, after a while, the effect will wear off. Like he won't be days from it as long, but the thing is, so long as he's not in the air, he has to reset his his fight uh, style. So then he will probably fight on the ground a little bit, then jump back in the air. So it's still gonna be beneficial to you, to uh, to any particular degree. So look into that. Bring plenty of those, and I, I literally cannot stress enough: bring as many as you can. Now his gear. Let's talk about this gear because the gear is actually really really cool. I like it. It's very aesthetic. It, they keep the aesthetics that they had from all the other previous games, but the skills on is pretty solid and kind of make me wanna. Maybe want to like make a couple of mix sets with it, but yo, for what it's worth, here we are. Off the rip, we have the set skill that nullifies wind pressure, negates all wind pressure, including the zone. And with it only being a three piece skill, truth be told, honestly, what I would do is I would fight him enough to where I can actually make three pieces, pieces rather, the armor, wear that particular skill, then go back and fight my man and really have to worry about too much of the wind at all. Really, really cool skill. Next, we're looking at handicraft and handicraft plus. 50, I should say. Increase your weapon sharpness by 50. Now, if you look all the way to the right, or see, see my sharpness, that highlighted area is that 50 increase to my sharpness. So if you have a weapon that has like a nice black gap right there, 
Handicraft will actually fill that gap up with more sharpness. You can either get a whole lot more green or a lot more blue or even get white, which is currently the highest sharpness rating you can get in this game with purple being the highest in the main console well, the main series, I should say, main series Moss Center games. There's other colors out there, but that's like Frontier. And nine times out of ten, people don't really count Frontier, but whatever. Next, we're looking at Ice Attack 4. Increases your Ice Attack by 100 with the bonus 5%. After that, looking at Evade, st evade, ugh, evade Extender. Increases the Evasion Distance. Greatly increases the Evasion Distance, actually. Level 3, that is. And lastly, Evade. No, not lastly, but you have Evade Window. Slightly increases the Invulnerability Window when evading. So, if you're... If you ever notice that you'll roll or you'll dodge or whatever out of the way of a certain attack, you're like, wow, that was really cool. Well, this makes it a whole lot easier to do that because sometimes it's actually kind of hard to do. But um, it's a really cool skill, especially if you have it all the way to level 5, then you're practically invincible. Lastly, this is the real lastly, focus level 1. Increases the gauge fill rate by 5% and reduces charge times by 5%. This is the kind of skill that you really want. You want to go wholehearted and not at all on it. Because level 1 is 5, level 2 is 10, level 3 is 20. So double what you already had before, and then 5% more than what you had all if you stack both the 2s together. So uh, it's definitely a skill you want to go all the way to level 3 with if you actually can. Uh, this goes for weapons that, that has like any kind of charge, like uh, gun lance, charge shots, great sword, charge slash, uh, files for like your charge blade, switch axe gauges, long swords, bows, all that stuff. It, it helps get all that stuff juiced up a lot quicker now for its weapons its weapons are actually a little hard to actually get to but if you go to your weapon tree and go to forge go to black steel that is actually either tealster's weapons or it's going to be kushless weapons and kush's weapons they are ice and usually they tend to fare pretty well when you put them up against a Le a legiana or lenny as I like to call them the issue though is that lenny has a little bit more sharpness in terms of its white capacity uh, it suffers in terms of attack, and that's kind of where Kush kind of picks up at. It doesn't have as much element as Lenny would have. It has more raw damage, and it has a little less sharpness. So, I mean, it's kind of your trade-off there. But its equipment's fairly decent. I mean, it's not the greatest equipment, equipment in the world, but it's pretty nice. Now, uh, before I wrap this up, because I, I can really kind of, like, my throat is killing me, guys. I apologize. Like, it may not sound that way to you. It may or may not, but my stuff is on fire. I got to, like, soothe it with, like, some hot tea or something like that. But... The one last thing I want to mention about Kush before I head out of here is that um, even though this run that you're looking at is not a very good run, I decided to actually keep this run because it shows you guys how annoying the monster can really, really be. And I'm pretty sure if you're fighting him right now yourself, you're probably really annoyed. But the real issue to fighting, well, the real benefit to fighting him, well, the, what am I trying to say here? I can't even talk today. The thing you really need to know when you go to fight him is to prepare for the tornadoes, okay? If by any, like, seriously, if you can get windproof anything, a really good example would probably be like ingot armor. If you can get ingot armor and then maybe have a gem for windproof, put that on. Come in here, you want to fight back against the wind. If you can't negate the wind entirely, at least alleviate a little bit of it. Have that, have yourself a measure of flash bombs, and then honestly, he doesn't really, his fight, if you can get past those things, aren't really that bad. One more thing, if you can absolutely make him not go to sleep on that very top perch, you will be in massively good hands. Because when he gets up there, when he goes to sleep at that top perch way up there, bro, he will summon five tornadoes at once and you literally cannot move. I luckily got very lucky he decided to sleep randomly at like area like four or something like that. All right, I can't remember. It just He just fell asleep right there. It was really, really, really weird. So I just... Knocked it out, but when I went to go grind for the armor, he fell asleep up there. Man, there was like there was like five tornadoes active at the same time. It was terrible. But um, if you if you really can, I highly suggest you do use all the cheap tricks. Okay, anything that's really really cheap, just do it because his zoning ability <coughs> is only uh, is only bested by the Kirin. And truth be told, no one really wants to fight either of these two monsters because they command so much ground. They they make it to where it's very, very hard for you to actually move around. It's very hard for you to attack. So, if you can knock that out of him, either knock him out the sky, mount him excessively, or use a high Elder Steel weapon to make sure he can't do uh, a, a great measure of those uh, tornadoes, you'll be in very, very good hands. That's pretty much, and honestly, the, the real tips I can really give you when it comes to fighting this guy. If you can't solo him yourself, again, you can also bring some friends in to help you out. Um, remember though, if you're gonna do that and you really, really want to learn and have a full-on experience, don't bring a whole contingent of your 
allies and have to come in there and slay the dragon in like three seconds because you're not gonna learn anything at least uh make it to where it's relatively like a fair price so you kind of get a bit of an understanding how to actually go about this that's pretty much what all i do in these videos kind of teach you guys a little bit of stuff here a little bit of there and then let you go out and develop your own abilities and skills and things like that but with that being said everyone it's been your boy dak 908 aka the dig dig myself my throat is on fire it actually burns that's weird uh have drink on hand i've been drinking it throughout this commentary and it doesn't really seem to help so until i get this thing blown over we will not do another video um or stream but i will tell you this the next video we're gonna do spoiler alert is the final uh elder dragon for this game however i recorded that fight twice and both times that fight got corrupted like the video got corrupted so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to grab four of my friends we're gonna run in there we're gonna beat it to death in like 11 minutes and i'm gonna give you guys a very quick rundown of what to expect when fighting of course normally i would do a longer video showcasing you guys what you get like possibilities and things like that you know it is possible to do it solo it is possible it just takes a very very long time almost 30 minutes is what it took me it took me 28 minutes the first time 26 27 the second time but video got corrupted both times so i'm just gonna go in there with some friends like i said beat his head in in like no time at all but just kind of so you guys everything you need to know when to go with the fight and when after that uh we're done with all the monsters and then we have joe to look forward to but um yeah i even got a, i haven't got a chance to talk to you guys about like what i think about joe and all the new updates or whatever but i don't think i'll be able to do that because you know my voice is um <clears throat> whatever uh anyway guys this has been your boy deck not a way they can the dig dig himself enjoy the rest of the video i apologize if this isn't my best I, I greatly do, but uh, soon enough we will have uh, bigger and better things to fry and more creative videos, actually. Creative videos is the ones I'm really looking forward to because these are cool and all, but I like to get really creative. I like to, you know, use my brain a little bit and just come up, come at you guys with little wacky videos or super informative videos, things like that. But yeah, take care, everyone. It's been your boy.
seriously impressive.